The product, trade and marketing branch of FAO's Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, Fisheries and Aquaculture Department, and NFFP, the NAPOT FAO Fish Program, presents the FAO Theory Processing Technique, FTT Theory. This video is the first in a series of three educational videos that promote the use of the FAO Theory Processing Technique or FTT Theory. This video provides general information on the FTT Theory and explains the advantages of this new technique for drying and smoking of products such as fish and crustaceous, shellfish, etc. The video primarily intends to inform any person or institution interested in artisanal fisheries activities or promoting the sustainable development of this sector as well as anyone seeking more information on certain aspects of fish product quality and safety. What is the FTT Theory? The FTT Theory is an advanced processing technique which provides processors with better working conditions and enables them to produce better quality and more competitive fish and aquaculture products. Fish, crustaceans, shellfish, etc. for local and international markets. It was developed by the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Technicians Training Center, CNFTPA based in Senegal in partnership with the FAO. First, the FTT Theory is not a new smoking kiln or a new type of drying rack. It is a processing approach that uses new devices that can be adapted on existing improved kilns to improve smoking and drying processes. This innovation results in products of good quality, high market value, and uniform characteristics. In addition, it can be used in different ways as not only can smoke and dry fish products, but also allows to perform storage and re-smoking, re-drying operations. In fact, this technique took stock of the strengths of existing improved kilns. For example, the Chorcor, the Banda, the Altona, and the cinder block, while addressing their weaknesses. Not only is fuel consumption significantly reduced, but also processors can minimize their exposure to heat, burns, and smoke. Moreover, it provides the possibility to store finished products over a long period. Above all, the main driver in the design of the FTT Theory was the control of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. These are important hazardous compounds closely linked to certain processing techniques and are contaminants in food such as smoked and dried products. PAHs, what are they? Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, are chemical contaminants formed as a result of incomplete combustion of organic products. Generally, PAH food contamination has an environmental origin, i.e. through emissions in the environment or technological pollution caused by certain drying, smoking, or cooking processes. In particular, roasting or braising on a direct flame can lead to high levels of PAHs when combustion gases are in contact with the food. Owing to the potential toxological effects of some PAHs, namely carcinogenic and genotoxic, they are strictly regulated through codes of good practice and guidelines to ensure that their presence in food are at the lowest level possible. Codex Alimentarius, 
the only international body responsible for the development of standards, codes of practice, guidelines and recommendations, has made PAHs one of its concerns and published a specific code of practice in 2009. Therein, in connection with reducing food contamination by PAHs from direct smoking and drying processes, it has defined variables that can lead to the formation of PAHs during smoking processes and drying. These are among others. Fuel, woods and other plant materials, diesel, gases, liquid, solid waste, and other fuels. Smoking or drying method, direct or indirect. Smoke generation process. The distance between the food and the heat source. Position of the food in relation to the heat source. Fat content of the food and what happens to it during processing. Duration of smoking and direct drying. Temperature during smoking and direct drying. Cleanliness and maintenance of equipment. The sign of the smoking chamber and the equipment used for smoke-air mixture, which influences the smoke density in the smoking chamber. These parameters were important sources of guidance for the designers of the FTT Tioroi. What is the FTT Tioroi's added value? Given that the FTT Tioroi is designed to be adaptable to existing improved kilns, it is straightforward for a processor who already owns one of these tools to acquire the FTT Tioroi. She, he only needs to add the newly developed components to benefit from the FTT Tioroi's many advantages, and in certain cases, slightly modify the existing kiln to adapt the furnace, to then smoke or dry fish, or do both. Indeed, five major advantages can be highlighted. First advantage. The FTT Tioroi enables the supply of safe and quality foodstuffs to consumers. Indeed, the FTT Tioroi allows processing of smoked and dried fish products that better meet food safety requirements. This results in a positive endorsement by the competent authority in charge of certifying products placed on the market. Moreover, consumer confidence is enhanced with products that meet their expectations. Second advantage. The FTT Tioroi protects commercial activities of small-scale processors of which women make up the significant majority. Firstly, it allows easy access to lucrative markets given the product's high quality and constant and uniform characteristics. Secondly, it offers opportunities to process fisheries products and store them over a long period. This allows for leverage against price fluctuations until optimal market conditions are met. The FTT Tioroi allows drying and smoking regardless of weather conditions. This results in better control of post-harvest losses, which may amount to and above 50% in some fisheries during the rainy season or on cloudy days. In addition, thanks to the FTT Tioroi, there is a reduced cost connected to controls analysis and seizures of products from relevant government agencies. Indeed, the standardized processes allow to prevent risks of non-compliance. This not only helps to reduce post-harvest losses, but also improves the income of operators. Finally, the FTT Tioroi provides opportunities for additional revenue with the possibility to process byproducts e.g. fat gathered through the FTT Tioroi's fat collection tray allows manufacturing of soap or can be used as cooking or frying oil. The third advantage. The FTT Tioroi promotes employment to craftsmen through the support of jobs that are linked to its manufacturing. 
Making or constructing FTTs is achievable at the community level and thus relies on the expertise of local artisans. The fourth advantage. The FTT theory contributes to improve the lives of women fish processors because it results in safe smoking conditions and ensures less heat, burn and smoke exposure. This is a major efficiency criterion for a large majority of operators. Moreover, the FTT theory also allows to save time spent in processing, allowing processors to attend to other business. This is a big advantage because in communities, women must often simultaneously engage in housework, children, kitchen, while carrying out their fish processing activities. The FTT theory respects and protects the environment as it actually reduces the amount of wood used as fuel. By adding stones, which decreases, the required amount of coal by about 50%. The FTT theory also adapts well to other fuels, such as coconut husks and shells, stems or corn cobs and millet, sugarcane bagasse, etc., and also butane gas. All this means that with the FTT theory, there is less deforestation, mangroves are better protected resulting in a positive impact on natural resources. This also allows processors to spend less money. Let's follow the stories of women users who compare the old methods of fish processing to the FTT theory. Today we are very, 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 very happy because our condition of fish and fish has changed today. What I have remarked is that quand on fumait là-bas, la fumée nous fatiguait. Avec là, ce n'est pas la même chose. Il y a très différent. Parce qu'avant qu'on prenait huile, ça salit les, les barriques. Et puis, si on n'a pas fait attention, ça prend le feu. Mais avec là, là, ça n'est pas ce cas. Là, c'est très bon. Quand on, met les, on prend huile là, on ne sent rien. These benefits cannot leave anyone indifferent, whether they are individual or an institution committed to the development of artisanal fisheries. Through the livelihood of the poorest or to ensuring food security for an entire population. Artisanal fisheries are actually the backbone of the entire sector in low-income countries. Therefore, promoting the use of FTT theory helps to promote the sustained development of these countries through the fisheries sector. Fish preservation and processing include a variety of techniques, and the most common in artisanal fishing communities are smoking, drying, fermentation, and frying. However, it's important to emphasize that the methods focused upon when developing the FTT theory, that is drying and smoking, coexist in processing sites and often are carried out by the same processor. Why has the FTT theory been developed specifically for smoking and drying? In general, drying and smoking are the main, if not the only, processes to enable the supply of perishable food to populations that live far away from fishing sites. This is especially acute when there is no or very poor infrastructure that could ensure an adequate cold chain and a steady supply of fresh fish. In addition, the smoke and dried fish provide a wide variety of textures and flavors, and thus a greater choice for consumers. The most popular improved kilns developed in recent decades are the cinder block and the charcoal the latter being the result of important research. It was a fruit of the cooperation between FAO and Food Research Institute in Ghana, the Food Research Institute of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. This kiln, introduced in 1969 in West Africa, has significantly improved the way small-scale fish processors manage their smoking and storage operations. 
the drying operation mainly takes advantage of the sun as an energy source. Therefore, following a timid social acceptance of solar tents, projects and programs have promoted sun drying on raised racks. However, some concerns have emerged in recent years regarding the limitations of these different processing methods. Indeed, drying fish naturally is particularly difficult or impossible during the rainy season or on cloudy days. Moreover, open air drying, without protection, exposes the product to contamination by wind dust, insects, rodents, and bird droppings. The need to better protect consumers' health was becoming imperative in terms of smoking methods, be it for the local market or for export. These implied fundamental changes. The actual constraint with the heater tool improved kiln stems from the fact that despite the obvious progress achieved, they were not designed to cater for the potential risk of contamination of food with PAHs. This concern is mainly related to the onset of incomplete combustion of wood, hot fumes, or fish fat dripping into the fire and thus generating a deposit of tar particles on the finished product. All these reasons have resulted in an increased food safety requirements in various regulatory frameworks. This creates a real challenge for processors and operators who solely depend on these activities for their livelihoods. In some countries, there have been several cases of seizures resulting in small-scale units facing difficulties to survive. Let's listen to the testimony of a processor who has been able to experience the latest FTT Tiroi prototype. N'est pas à cause avec le feu, on dépose les choses, on se retire, après on s'en va, on ouvre, on regarde et je vois que ça là est le meilleur. De l'huile là, ce que je vois passer, ça, ça, ça recueille l'huile et avec cette huile, on peut travailler, on peut prendre pour faire les choses. Mais avec, avec euh, l'autre là, l'huile là, ça verse dans le feu et ça noircit la barrique et puis deux fois ça prend le feu, notre poisson, mais deux fois ça se brûle. La consommation du bois là, ça là, on utilise, on utilise moins. Parce qu'on met tous les poissons dans la chose, le cœur et puis on prend un peu de bois avec un peu de charbon et ça cuit. Donc on, utilise, ça passe, donc on utilise moins le bois plus que là-bas. La qualité a une très grande différence. Parce que ça là, c'est bien doré, et puis c'est bien cuit, sans effort. Donc, euh,